from an NBA player spending $156,000 to get the best food, to buying out a whole fancy restaurant and another converting to veganism? What? This is the stupidly expensive food that NBA it players was. eat. Thon Maker is a 7 foot 1, 230 pound former NBA player. In order to maintain his weight, Maker has to eat over 7,000 calories a day. That's three times what a normal person eats on a daily basis. While he played for the Bucks, he ate over seven meals a day, which included mountains of pasta, meat, protein smoothies, and eggs. All of his meals were at least four servings of food. The Bucks' dietitian said that Thon kills our food budget. With the quality and quantity of the food, Thon must clock in over $250 a day on food. But it's not quite as expensive as eating high quality fish. And Kevin Durant eats fish every single day for multiple meals a day. He eats eight ounces every single day of the week. His favorites are salmon, sea bass, scallops, and shrimp. Fish is one of the healthiest protein sources possible, so it makes sense why our bald and brother makes it a priority. Other NBA players make finances a priority, so they make sure to invest their food money even further. Shaq is one of the biggest proponents of this, especially with his recent acquisition of Papa John's. He's a majority stakeholder in the company, and received over $8 million to advertise and be the face of the company. And recently, Shaq came out with a new company, Big Chicken Shaq. But what did the people think of this new restaurant? YouTuber Jidel went and tried it out, and his reaction was interesting. So this sandwich is the Shaq attack, but apparently Shaq Jack's favorite is the popcorn chicken, so that's where we're gonna start. Ooh, dude, it smells so good. Cheers. I really like that. That is great. Try with the sauce. It is surprisingly great. really, really good. I don't want to go crazy, but these might be the best popcorn chicken fast food I've ever had. The reviews are in. Shaq has another successful business. Along with Papa John's and Big Chicken, Shaq also owns over 155 Five Guys and 17 Auntie Anne's pretzels. These help contribute to Shaq's net worth of over 400 million. Many businessmen of his stature are known to be frugal and uncaring, but Shaq is the opposite. One night in New York City, Shaq was out on a date and he was feeling generous, so he paid for everyone's meals on that night. A check that totaled over $25,000. He also left the biggest tip they've ever received to the serving staff. A reporter went inside Shaq's house to see what he eats for breakfast, and it's not as much as she thought. You know what that is? Oh. What That's is my beast. That's my seven foot beast that we feed. That's right. This morning, I'm having breakfast with Shaq. Let me see if we get the, the approval. <laughs> 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 now, when I think Shaquille O'Neal, I'm thinking like 20 pancakes. How many does he eat? He's going to have two to three pancakes. That's all? Yeah. But these aren't your basic pancakes. They are pancakes made with sprouted whole wheat flour, cinnamon, nutmeg, coconut sugar, almond milk, and bananas. Oh, and this is our life. Pancakes. Pancakes. <laughs> Feed the beast, it's real. He also gets a huge omelet alongside that. If you've ever been inside a Whole Foods, you know that buying food like that will break the bank for normal folks. Hey, Shaq is also on our payroll, so he said to make sure to subscribe to Time Out on YouTube, or he'll take a bite out of you. Yeah, definitely the 100% truth. Thanks, Shaq. Another player who spends over $1,000 a day on his diet is LeBron James, but you won't believe how bad this man eats. Tristan Thompson, who's played with LeBron on multiple NBA teams, said that LeBron has the worst f diet ever. LeBron boasts that he eats an extremely healthy diet with lean proteins and vegetables, but Thompson says that the reality is different. Ask him what he eats for breakfast. He has like five French toasts, drowns it in syrup with strawberries and bananas, then he has like a four egg omelet, and then he just goes and just fucking dunks on somebody. It doesn't make sense. Thompson added, he eats desserts with every meal. He'll come with his one week diet, vegan crap, but he literally eats like it doesn't make sense. He's really a specimen. He eats like shit. I remember one year I tried to eat like he ate and it just didn't work out. I started gaining weight and said, f this. I mean, it works for him. He loves sweets. He eats desserts and French toast. It's crazy how his body just burns it. Along with the sweets, LeBron drinks a glass of wine every single day to strengthen his heart. The science is mixed on this, so I don't know if I would follow this advice. Some people say that the alcohol in wine offsets the health benefits. Regardless, doesn't seem like his diet is very good when left to his own devices. To avoid making unhealthy choices, LeBron hired a personal chef named Dina Marino. She cooks him up some fire, but makes sure that it's healthy and optimal for James's performance. And Bron makes sure to make it work 
worth her while because he pays her a salary of over $156,000 a year. You may as well eat gold leaf with every meal you eat. LeBron talks about the importance of eating healthy meals during the season here. The things that I start cutting down is the sugars, you know, when it comes to the playoffs, you know, it's, it kind of slows down the process of recovery, you know, and uh, throughout the regular season, you know, it's okay to have a little bit of it, but, you know, in the, in the postseason, when you're optimal recovery, I mean, whoever can recover the fastest from game to game, going to put themselves in position to be successful the next game. So the sugars I kind of cut out, but the carbs I kind of ramp up because you're losing so many calories, you're burning so many calories, you're burning all your energy throughout those games, so I kind of go heavy on the carbs. Considering what Thompson said about his sweet tooth, I think he's maybe understating how much sugar and sweets he actually eats, but we'll give him a pass. Whatever he's doing is working, because he's still playing at a high level at 38 years old. Someone who never really played at a high level on the court, but certainly did off the court, was Junior Bridgman. He was an NBA player in the 60s and 70s who never made more than 350 thousand a season. If you've ever seen the top 10 list of richest NBA players of all time, he comes in third after LeBron James and Michael Jordan. His small paycheck, at least relative to other NBA players on those lists, he used to purchase five Wendy's restaurants in 1988 shortly after his retirement. Wendy's was not the household name then, as it is today. Junior took a gamble on these restaurants and spent millions of dollars purchasing these first Wendy's, but that would grow into a 600 million empire of restaurants that also included included Chili's and Fazoli's. Not yet an empire is the vegan community, and quite a lot of NBA players have been joining up. Kyrie Irving, Damian Lillard, and Chris Paul are some of the players who have converted to veganism. And memes ensued in Kyrie's Nike commercial. Let's see that backwards. How'd you do that? Simple. Plant-based diet. And Damian Lillard spoke about it without being prompted. Typical vegan. You know I'm vegan now, so I've been vegan for a month. Wanting to eat cleaner, and uh, also I was trying to, I want to play lighter this year. Um, be easier on my joints and on my feet, so. Getting older and, you know what I mean, I don't, you don't want to let that age sneak up there on you or you just get in the habit of, you know, eating whatever you want to eat, because I know I'm going to burn it off when it's time to play, so just, creating better habits. I feel much better. I thought it was I thought it was all hype. You know, I thought people just said it just because it was a, you know, healthier food, but I can feel it. Sure, maybe you have more energy, but isn't being a vegan much more expensive? All that fresh produce and whatnot? Well, actually, after looking into it, vegans save on average $23 a week on groceries. I mean, but they're also missing the joy of eating a juicy steak. I'll take the steak. Thanks, vegans. Giannis's recent food adventure is not so healthy or vegan. I'll let him tell you what it is. Uh, from Oreos, from Skittles. You guys know how much I love Skittles. Kit Kats. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta try some. Yummy, yummy. Whew. Lovable lobsters. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. So, again, guys, um, you guys know how much I love candy, so there was no way I would enjoy in Candy Fun House to create something amazing. So, I decided, me and my family, to join the team and become stakeholders in the company. This is exciting. I cannot wait for the future. Bring joy to people. But for all my friends out there, real friends that know me and I know you, be on the lookout. <sighs> should I? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, maybe we should be calling the Greek freak the candy freak now. Eh, it doesn't work as well. For a company like that, Giannis likely spent millions of dollars to become a stakeholder in it. Talk about expensive food. Another NBA player with a sweet tooth is Derrick Rose. So much so that he called it his poison. Rose's teammate says that he eats gummy bears and Starburst for breakfast and Twizzlers and honey buns for dinner. Rose constantly complains about how his stomach hurts. Maybe cut back on the candy, my man. The teammate also said, We tell Derek the whole year, stop eating so many gummy bears and sour straws. 
but he can't. Nobody eats gummy bears more than him. Man, my tummy hurts just thinking about all that food. At least he was probably saving money. Candy is significantly cheaper than an 8-ounce steak. Another cheap food trend that multiple NBA players have latched onto is a classic. Players like Steph Curry, Kevin Garnett, Dwight Howard, and Carmelo Anthony joined the club. What club is that? The Peanut Butter and Jelly Club. What? Kevin Garnett apparently started the trend because he had one of his best games when he ate a PB&J on a whim. From then on, KG became methodical about eating one before every single game. Steph also hopped on that train. Here's his nutritionist talking about it. Two months ago during a game at halftime, Steph was yelling back to the bench. He was like, I'm hungry, I'm starved. So he asked that I make him something during halftime. Figured I'd put together a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for him. And that kind of is what started it. Now it's a pregame tradition with a certain set of ingredients. Choosy moms choose Jif, but what does Steph choose? Ste uh, usually Jif creamy, the, the natural creamy uh, Jif. But when a new nutritionist joined the team, he had a different outlook on the childhood favorite. So he completely banned the team from eating them. He said that they were too high in sugar and not good for the players. However, Steph and the others boycotted. They could not believe that he would ban their pregame snack. Because of the outcry, the team was forced to add them back to the menu. Oh, well, they for sure saved some money with those. NBA players are definitely not saving money when they frequent an extremely fancy restaurant called Nobu. NBA players like Devin Booker and Kevin Durant go there with their boys and also sometimes take dates there. Nobu boasts menu items like a $96 New York strip steak, along with a Japanese Wagyu that clocks in at $38 an ounce. If you wanted an NBA-sized portion for that Wagyu at 8 ounces, that would cost you $304 for a single steak. Jesus! Miss me with that. Giannis is not about that life, though, because when he went out to dinner in LA, he said this. How was dinner, Giannis? It was uh, incredible. Incredible? Expensive, that for me. This city is that for me. Come on, man, you make a lot of money. No, no, no. <laughs> He's just like me for real. Looks like we're never gonna see Giannis in a Lakers jersey anytime soon. Charles Barkley didn't want to see himself in a 76ers jersey, so he spent a lot of money and pigged out on food. Here he is telling you what he did. I was about 300 pounds in college. It just had bought me in for a visit. We want to draft you, but, but we're concerned about your weight. Why don't you stop back here the day before the draft? We want you to weigh 285. I think I had like six weeks before the draft. So I get down about 285. Then my agent says to me, now Chuck, you know if the 76ers take you, they can only give you $75,000. I said, what? Shit, I didn't leave college for $75,000. I could have got that much in college. We got about three days before I had to go back to Philly. I said, well, I don't want the Sixers to draft me. We went on an Eden bin. No way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I stop in Philly. I weigh 298. Owner called me every name in the book. I can't believe you fat ass, blah, blah, blah. I leave and I'm thinking like, woo, we dodged a bullet. But the fifth overall pick in the draft, the Philadelphia 76 select Charles Barkley out of Auburn. That's crazy. Can you imagine how much money Chuck had to waste to gain that much weight? Dwight Howard didn't waste any money on his food habits, but he may have wasted away his career. You're not going to believe what he was eating on a consistent basis. When I just started I wanted to love Skittles and all I wanted was Skittles, Skittles, Skittles and Starburst and, and then I just, you know, I couldn't stop. And then I fell in love with honey buns <laughs> and I would eat like at least four or five of them a day, maybe more, just heat them up and have some ice cold water with it. It was so good. And this is like you're an NBA player. Oh, yeah. Or... yeah, my routine one, one season was McDonald's before every game. And my what, teammates what wanted me, get? I would get uh, two double cheeseburgers, a large fry, a small fry, <laughs> uh, strawberry chocolate milkshake, in a large coat and go have like the best game of my life. So I was like, I gotta keep this up, it's working. Are you kidding me? I guess if you can dunk it like Dwight, then you're allowed to have a bit of Mickey D's. Back then, the price of McDonald's wasn't so bad, but NBA stadium prices are a different story. And for us NBA fans, we're not NBA players, so we can't afford that. One of NBA YouTube's goats, Jeffrey Bowie, tried out the cheapest and most expensive food in an NBA arena. What $100 gets you in food at a Suns NBA game? We're starting off with the cheapest items. I got a cookie for $6 and cotton candy for $9, and these were great. And we're moving on to a box of pizza for $15.19. But what's more expensive than that is a Benny Hanna steak bowl for $20.08. Next, we have a hot dog that was really expensive for $27. Yeesh. 
the NBA arenas think we got it like that? Michael Jordan does got it like that though, because along with Shaq, he spent tons of money to create his own restaurant, but not fast food. It's a bougie steakhouse, and it's not for the faint of heart, because they have a steak flight clocking it at $180 in Chicago. Don't you think you got enough money, MJ? Someone who may not have enough money soon is John Morant, because he's ruining his career with all his off-the-court antics. If you want to hear the harsh truth about him, click here.